Well, good morning and welcome to our time together this morning for morning prayer on this Monday morning. <laughs> start of another week, a start of wondering what will this week hold, but a great chance to come together this morning, right at the start of the day, to read from God's word, to wonder together what might he be saying to us today in these times, what's the challenge, what's the opportunity, what's the inspiration or the encouragement from God's living, breathing word for us today. As ever, we're using the daily prayer app if you want to have that on a, on a phone or a tablet if you want to join in that way or if you just want to join in where you can, um, let's go on a journey together as we pray for the world together. So let's pray this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning is psalm number one. Let's read it together. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the assembly of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. Like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the wicked, it is not so with them. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not be able to stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. Christ, our wisdom, give us delight in your law, that we may bear fruits of patience and peace in the kingdom of the righteous for your mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. We'll come back to that opening psalm in a moment or two, but first let's read our New Testament reading and we're continuing in the book of Luke, reading today Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to them, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. He said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him. When he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them, then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. 
The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Well known words of Jesus this morning for us. What might the Lord want to say both through our Psalm 1 and the story of the parable of the Good Samaritan? Psalm 1, this famous psalm, the opening of the entire book, of the psalm books. And what does Psalm 1 set up for us? Well, the two ways of living, God's way or the world's way. Which side are we on this morning? Which counsel are we seeking? The counsel of the wicked or the counsel of the word of God? The living, breathing words of God that speak words of hope and truth of instruction, of guidance, in a world which is so often confused by who to listen to and at what point and what to chase after. What does scripture offer to us? That our delight, our counsel should be sought in the law of the Lord. The way of God's people, the psalm says, is to meditate on God's word day and night. How does scripture shape the rhythm of our lives? Well, we're coming together each morning at the moment we're reading from God's word maybe you're reading God's word later in the day as well what's the rhythm how are we um just filling our lives with what it is that God is saying to us at this time I love this image in Psalm 1 verse 3 of um God's people are like the the tree planted by streams of water planted the foundations are secure we're, what are we drinking in the living breathing streams of water. When we've got our foundations, when we're planted in God, what's the, what's the result? Well, we bear fruit in due season, leaves that do not wither. What are your foundations planted in this morning? What water are you, are you taking in when you're thirsty? The living word of, the living water of God or just the latest option the world throws up. It's interesting, the, the psalm then compares the, the people of God are planted and what is the way of the wicked? Well, it's just like chaff, it's just blowing. The next thing, tumbleweed moving on here for a bit and then the wind comes and something else replaces it. Who are we listening to today? What are we planted in? Whose way are we walking? The way of the righteous or the way of the wicked? Where do you want to be planted this morning? Would God, as that prayer said, give us wisdom that we might delight in his word, that we might bear fruits of patience and peace in the kingdom of the righteous? That's where I want to be planted this morning. I want to be planted in the living by the living waters of the Lord, planted with firm foundations, a tree with deep roots that I know in the changing nature of the world where I am rooted. Not the way of the wicked, but the way of the righteous. What about you this morning? What are you setting your foundations in at the start of this new week? Then we had this famous parable from Jesus, right? The parable of the Good Samaritan. We all know it. We've probably been told it hundreds of times, probably from a very young age. This lawyer stands up to test Jesus. Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, what, what's written in the law? What do you know to be the truth? And the lawyer gives the perfect answer. He quotes the old testament the the law from deuteronomy you know what's written that i'll love the lord your god with all your heart with all your strength with all your mind and that you would love your neighbor as yourself but the lawyer the luke records what's to justify himself so he asks another question well who is my neighbor <laughs> and what does jesus do he tells the story of the good samaritan we all know it the man walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, is attacked by robbers, stripped, beaten, left for dead. 
what happens? Well, who walks past? Well, first of all, we have a priest, then a Levite, two people that we would have expected to have helped. But what do they do? They cross over and walk by on the other side. Now, so often we hear the story told as, oh, you know, they didn't want to stop, but this is who we would have expected. But there's also an angle in this story that they were trying to follow the rules themselves. This man was bloodied. They perhaps were more worried about their tasks within the temple. If they had touched this man, would they then have been unclean for their duties? Do sometimes do we just get our faith the wrong way round? Rather than help, these people put their position and how they understood the law above simply caring for this man who was dying on the roadside. But who comes along next? The Samaritan, the one the original heroes of the stories thought of as the baddie. <laughs> what does the Samaritan do? He gets alongside this man. He, he, he bandages his wounds. Interestingly, he pours oil and wine. <laughs> What's that little detail all about? Because these were things left for the temple. The Levi and the priest didn't use the oil to bind any wounds. They walked on by, they didn't see the issue. But instead, the Samaritan, perhaps there's a beautiful comment in here about what does worship look like? A man that didn't even probably know what he was doing in using the oil and the wine. Anyway, he pours oil and wine, he bandaged the wounds, he puts the injured man on his own donkey, takes him to an inn and pays the man's dues. Look after this man and when I next pass by, I will pay you back what I owe you. Which of these men was the neighbour to the man in need? Of course, the answer is the Samaritan, the one who got alongside, the one who was bloodied and bruised, the one who couldn't help in that moment because he had been left for dead by the side of the road. How can we be a good Samaritan to those around us today? Who can we help? Let us not be like the Levite or the priest who just walk on by, too busy in their own heads, perhaps of where they were heading to, too busy trying to keep some of the rules in a way which meant they didn't help the man that needed the help. Whose side are we on today? The way of the righteous or the way of the wicked? Where are our foundations planted? Where, how are we navigating this world we find ourselves in? Will we tend to the one who has been beaten up and bruised by the side of the road? Or will we walk by because it's not our problem? Whose side are you on this morning? Are you standing with those who are oppressed? Are you willing to cross lines, to cross roads in order to be a good neighbour to those who need it this day? Who might you listen to? Who might you have compassion for? Whose wounds might you care to today? And whose cause might you pay in order that recovery can happen? Whose neighbour can we be today? Whose side are we on? Will we just walk by or will we sit with, care for those who are oppressed and beaten down this day? What might be our act of worship this day? Who might we be good neighbours to? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Friends, let's pray for our world today. Who are the people on your heart? What are the situations you want to bring before our Heavenly Father? Let's pray together this morning. Lord God, we thank you for our word, for your word to us this morning. Lord, would we be people who plant our foundations in your word? 
Would we be like trees planted by the banks of the living streams of water which you give to us? Would we be people who with our foundations in the right place would grow to be trees that produce fruit, the fruits of patience, of hope, of joy, of love, of gratitude. Lord, grow us in our walks with you, we pray. Lead us into ever deepening maturity in our walk with you as your disciples. Lord, would you help us to be good neighbours? Lord, help us to love you and worship you as you call us to do. Lord, would we not be like the Levite or the priest who crossed the road and walked by, for it was not their issue or their problem. They had other, perhaps more important things in their heads to deal with, rather than see the need of the man who was bloodied and bruised and dying on the roadside. Lord, would you move us to compassion, that we might care for those who have been bloodied and beaten up, held back and oppressed by structures in our society. Move us to respond in action and not just to cross the road and walk on by to other issues. Lord God, we want to pray this morning for our world, for its questions, for its frustrations, for its anger, for its confusion. Lord, we need your clarity this day. Give us your wisdom, we pray. Give us your compassion in your heart for how to respond to the situations we may find ourselves in today. Lord, your love changes situations. Your hope speaks into situations that are hopeless. Lord, would you bring peace to places of conflict, rest to anxious minds and hearts, comfort to those who are weary or fearful or anxious this day. Draw close, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we want to pray this morning for all those who are sick, either from COVID or from other illnesses. We remember, Lord, before you today, all those fighting cancer, for those fighting long-term health conditions. Perhaps where you are, you might want to name those you know who are sick aloud. Lord God, we lift Lord God, would you strengthen their bodies? Bring healing, we pray. Remind them of your presence with them as we pray for them this morning. Lord, whether at home or in hospital, with those who are sick, know more of your peace and your healing this day, we pray. We pray for um, those who would attend them, Lord, if in hospital, would you give doctors and nurses skill and wisdom as they work towards a solution. Lord, we pray for your healing, Lord God. Lord God, as we've mentioned, doctors and nurses, we remember all who work in the NHS. We remember all of our key workers, for those in the NHS, for carers, for all those who work in schools, for social workers, for delivery drivers, for shop workers, for those in essential council services, for those who work in prisons, for all those who work in transport services, be it tube drivers or bus drivers, taxi drivers, train drivers. Lord, would your protection be upon all those who work in our stations across TFL. Lord, we pray for adequate provision to be put in place to keep those on these front lines safe. We pray on for justice for Billy Majinga's family and for her colleagues as they seek to do their job in a safe way, Lord. Lord, we pray on for all key workers and for those who have now been encouraged to go back to work. Would you keep people safe, Lord God, as they travel to workplaces? We pray for good practices to be put in place to keep people safe whilst in their workplaces. Lord, for those who worry about key workers or for others going back to work, would you give them peace and uphold them, we pray. 
Lord, we want to remember again our schools as more pupils return back this day. We remember St Luke's school next door with some year sixes returning today and with reception following later in this week. Lord, we pray for all those who work in schools. Would you keep them safe? We pray for pupils returning and for parents wondering. For those who will remain at home, Lord, would your hand of protection be on our children and our young people and our teachers and our teaching staff. Lord, protect and uphold there, we pray. Lord, we want to remember those today in authority over us. Lord, we pray for wisdom, for clarity, for integrity, for the right advice to be heard at the right time as we continue to move forward in this fight against COVID-19. Lord, we do remember Boris Johnson by name and his cabinet, for the different scientists and medical advisors that support him. Lord, we pray on for our MPs, our councillors, our first ministers, for our local mayor here in Newham. Give to those in authority the wisdom they need, the hearts they need, the energy they need to serve us at this time. Lord, we too also want to remember those who grieve this day. Perhaps where you are again, you might want to name them aloud. Lord, in your word, you promise to be close to the brokenhearted, to those who mourn. And so, Lord, we pray for more of your peace to be known, your comforting presence. Lord, we thank you for the hope of the resurrection. Would you um, surround those who grieve today with the knowledge of your presence and your love. For those who will take funerals this day, Lord, give them the, the words they need. Lord, would you sustain those taking funerals this day? In times of weariness, would you speak your words of hope? Lord, as they stand and speak of your love, of your hope, of your presence, would they know it true for them too? Would you sustain and comfort and energise at this time, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to pray today also for those who are struggling in these times of isolation, for the lonely, for the elderly, for those facing financial difficulties, for those with questions over the future. We pray for those fighting mental health battles and for those for whom home is not a safe place. We pray on for those whose housing situation is challenging. Lord, either for homelessness or in temporary accommodation. For those in refugee camps, Lord, we pray for breakthrough today in these housing situations. Lord God, would we all know you with us this day and the challenges that we may face and the opportunities that come. Lord, would we know your hope and your light, your peace, and your presence with us. Lead us, guide us, use us for your glory, we pray. Perhaps where you are, you might want to um, lift before the Lord the things and the people I haven't yet prayed for this morning. We come before the God who knows the prayers of our hearts. As we speak them out either aloud or in our hearts, would we know God's reassurance that when we pray, he hears us. Lord God, we lift. Lord God, I want to pray for Shagan this morning and his best friend Al Haji Adeola Smith after the loss of his wife last Friday. Lord, draw close. You are a God of all comfort. Would you give peace and hope? Give Shagan the words as he seeks to comfort his best friend. Lord, draw close. We pray, would your presence be known? O oh God, from whom all blessings flow, by whose providence we are kept, and by whose grace we are directed, help us through the examples 
of your servants to faithfully keep your word, humbly to accept adversity and steadfastly to worship you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray, I pray today that today is a day in which you know God's presence and his peace with you. Thank you for joining me as ever for morning prayer. We pray that those who are particularly grieving, Shagan, we will remember you throughout the day in prayer and your friends, the entire Smith family today. Would you know God's peace and his hope, his comfort, his joy, his love with you? We look forward to gathering again tomorrow for morning prayer. But for now, have a blessed day and see you again soon. Bye now.